You good? Yep, yeah, I'm good. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Athletes Club. I'm excited to be joined here today with Yate. That's right. <laughs> what up? What up? Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Uh, Jan, you are someone who kind of give them a little bit of background from Michigan. Um, 2014 Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year. 2018 SEC Player of the Year ranks number two all time in points, number four in rebounds, and three in blocks at Georgia. And a fun fact has placed number two on ESPN's top 10 plays. Uh, you spent some time, as mentioned, at Georgia with the Miami Heat, uh, their G League team, the Sky Force, uh, Maine Red Claws, South Korea, Israel, and in Japan. So to kind of get right into it, um, to kind of talk about mental health, it's been uh, you know more welcoming to talk about for athletes. Uh, a lot of athletes have been more spoken up about it. So to ask you, has mental health ever been a challenge for you at any point in time in playing basketball? Mm, straight to the straight to the nitty gritty, huh? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think it to be honest, I think it's not just a basketball thing. I think it's just an everyone thing to mm -hmm. a certain degree. Like everyone goes through ups and downs, you know. I'm a big believer in Jesus, so I have a lot of faith uh, that God's gonna get me through the ups and the downs, you know, because even when you're you're high, like in life or what you think, there's still certain things that want to bring you back low, you know. So, for instance, I, even when I was in South Korea, I loved playing there. Um, but it was my first time being out the States and uh, it was COVID. So when I had got to South Korea, well, on my way into South Korea, um, I don't know if you were there. You might have been there at that time, but I think I started talking on the back end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, but on my way in there, we had to do a quarantine, a two week quarantine in a government facility. Mm -hmm. um, so I came from playing in the G League. I thought I was going to get a call up because we had like the number one um, number one team in the G League at the time. It was like me, Kaiser Gates, Taco Falls, Shermont Water, Carson Edwards or whatever. Um, and like we just had an extremely Trey Davis, like a whole like a whole bunch of hoopers. So we're like, oh, yeah, someone's getting a call up. But uh, it didn't happen because COVID hit. And so I was waiting around, seeing if we we're going to have a G League season, seeing what the NBA was doing. Didn't hear anything. People were calling me, like, yeah, you want to play? Like, we got some money. I was like, I'm not doing anything. I might as well go. So I went to South Korea, got there, hit me with a two week. I mean, the place literally, legitimately, like you see my, my background, like, yeah, it legitimately was smaller than this. It was a bed. You could probably walk three steps in each direction after the bed and we, we were in there for about two weeks not about two weeks for two weeks and uh no one could give you anything um so the food that was coming in it was i mean who I, I i kid you not i kid you not i'll see if i can find it and so you can add it to the uh add it to the uh, video but i remember i got one morning i got cereal no milk Cereal with no milk is crazy, first off, because I don't know what's being done with that. Cereal, no milk, fries, and some grapes. Like French fries? French fries for breakfast and grapes. <laughs> it, was like, it was like four grapes. So, yeah, that was probably one of the hardest times was, was the transition from playing in America um, to then playing in South Korea. The food was good when I got there. Like once I got past two weeks, everything was good. But uh, it was really lonely. That was really the challenge besides the food part at the beginning was uh, the loneliness. Like I got over there and was like, it's far away from my friends, far away from my family. And so it was my first time getting into that situation. And I really just was questioning, like, is this what I really want to do anymore? Which I'm sure most athletes have to a certain degree, like right. uh, the transition period. Um, and I was just really questioning, like, is this what I want to do? And then uh, my dad ended up getting sick that same uh, year as well. And so I had to go out to Africa and take care of him and uh, get him off of, uh, uh, he was on like a lot of steroids just trying to keep him alive. And so that was probably like one of the hardest times in my life was going from where I was at to South Korea, then to my dad. But um, God really prepared me for that season. Um, prior to that, it was a group of, I was praying to God to like put me in touch with like other Christians. As I told you, I'm a Christian. Um, people that were like like-minded to me and he had put me um 
in touch with a group of guys. Like I prayed for it. Like God put me in some guys like that are on fire for you. Put me in touch with some guys. The guys like were, I mean, spewing all verses. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get like them. I told them, I said, guys, I'm trying to get like y'all. Y'all know the word for real. Like I know the word, but y'all like anything I was saying, I was like, no, I would say right here, here, here. I'm like, okay. So like they were prepared. And so like I went through a season where I was like, I got to get like that. And so I'm memorizing verses and I got through a hard, I got to a hard season in my life and I was prepared for it because of the preparation um, that God had blessed me with, with talking to these guys, getting on fire for them. I mean, getting on fire for God and uh, doing that. And so it really got me to that season where I was really good uh, mentally knowing that who was like, my rock, you know what I'm saying? So that really carried me through. I know everybody has different ways of coping with things. Uh, but for me, that was always been super big for me, knowing like where my rock and foundation was. Uh, and that definitely helps me so much with mental, with mental health, because I know it's such a big thing in the world right now. I think there's a lot of people who um, don't know. People are telling you that you need to accept ideas. People are telling you uh, you have to do certain things and, and it's just, it's just, it's a mess right now in my personal opinion with just how people are telling you how you have to be, how you have to think, you know what I'm saying? Versus like, uh, more traditional American, which is, you know, but yeah, so that's how I kind of like have taken, uh, taking it all. That's how I deal with my mental health. It's really right. like my, God. So in in these moments of what you're saying, like, are you someone like you mentioned, like you, you definitely pray to uh, God and everything. Um, are you someone who you say would isolate yourself in these times or like, would you reach out to yeah. like, friends and stuff and kind of surround yourself with people to not necessarily be alone? I'll be honest with you. I'm more of an isolator, which is bad. It's actually not good at all. Like it's it's good because certain people need to reset with isolation, but um, God didn't make us isolated beings, you know, in my opinion, like, like, and the reason why I say that is because if you fall in life, who's going to pick you up? You know what I'm saying? When you're by yourself, yeah, you can pick yourself up, but what if you can't pick yourself up in the situation, you know? And so it's just, it's just really comes down to having like a brotherhood or having like people in your life that you love and can count on. Um, to help you get up in those hard times because um, I know there's another verse that talks about like a strand. One strand is easily cut. Two, not so much. And three is like you're not cutting through it. You know, and that's kind of like how it is with having people that you can depend on. So um, I personally can say that I am more of a soloer. But as I've gotten older, Oh, solo is not even the right word. I'm sorry, I play video games a lot. <laughs> so I was about to say, I solo queue. Solo queue solo, into I so, I solo queue life. I solo queue life. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's I've, I've come to learn that the more I have people around me and can depend on, the more blessed life that I can live because now it's not just them that I'm using. They're using me too. You know what I'm saying? And I, don't humbly can say like I I feel like I bring a lot of wisdom to my friends, you know, mm -hmm. in a in a good way. Definitely. As you just briefly mentioned about having uh faith and being a Christian, that's definitely one of the things like getting to know you that you find out pretty quickly is your faith and stuff. When did your faith uh in Christianity and God start for being a Christian? Almost as long as I can remember. I mean, it really comes down to my mom, which I feel like a lot of times it is with a single black parent mom, like mm -hmm. that's like almost one of the staples. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to get too off topic, but I, I feel like that's they depend they depend on God. I know sometimes like you can get in places where you get money or you get success or whatever, and you stop depending. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. um, but um, I can say that. It was my mom that started the relationship off with me. She had me find God for myself versus a lot of times people grow up in Christian. Sometimes, not all the time, but a lot of times, like people can grow up in Christian households. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know. Um, 
but they don't really know God for themselves, you know? And so I think that's a complete different story. But I think the earliest uh, memory that I have is I was, <laughs> the earliest, earliest memory I had, I'll say two things. The earliest, early memory I had was probably like my mom saying, I was looking for something. And my mom was like, I was like, mom, I don't know where it is in my room. She was like, uh, go ask God. No, 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 listen, most people be like, what your mom said, go ask God. And I'm a little, little kid. She's like, pray, yeah. sit down and pray. But my mom wasn't being like, like funny. She, no, she was like, seriously, like sit down and pray and God will let you know where it is. I sat down and pray and I found it. Told me exactly where it was. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> there, there he is right there. Oh, um, and so, yeah, that's, um. That was probably like one of the earliest, earliest memories I think I had. It's crazy. I just spawned on me right now. I spawned. See, these gaming terms are serious. Yeah. Um, we I just came, to came to, that came to my <laughs> recollection literally right now. But the uh, second um, earliest memory I, I, I say was like when I was like, I was like seven. I, li I moved out to California with my family. Uh, well, with my mom and then sister who came along. Uh, but I was out there with my friends, um, and their their name was the Stones, and um, we was at this park. And I, my mom would always ask when I come home, like before we went to bed, because we always had devotion together. She would say, uh, "Who'd you tell about Jesus today?" And I'd be like, um, "Blah blah blah, blah or whoever, whoever." You know, I always thought about that because I knew she was gonna ask every day. She, I mean, it was. It was coming every exactly. single day. I mean, listen, listen, you it's, it's, you better have told somebody about Jesus. Not because she was going to be bad, but just because you knew it was coming. I was like, oh, uh, this is my everyday thing. Sir, do you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> and so one day, this is the reason why I did it. It was truly just on my heart. But uh, I remember I was talking to this dude, this little kid. I was a little kid. I don't know why I said that. I was seven. He was probably like a year or two younger than me. And I, I I asked, I was like, do you, do you know Jesus or whatever? And he was like, no, or whatever. And I was like, do you want to accept him into your heart? And so I basically like had him accept Jesus into his heart. And I'm pretty, I don't know if I knew the, the Lord's prayer, or not the Lord's prayer. I don't know if I knew the uh, prayer to have people accept Jesus into their heart. I'm guessing I did. Cause I, I, I have like vivid memory of him, like me going back and telling like I had a kid, kid accept him into his heart. But um, yeah, that's probably like one of the earliest things I, I could recall. That's, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, how does your faith tie into sports in times of adversity? I know you touched on it a little bit, but like, uh, yeah. uh, I know you've dealt with like some injuries in the past, or even like the mental health you was uh, touching on. Yeah. Um. So I've had like discussions with God, like, is this like even with hooping? Um, I know I'm like still really good at it. Uh, God's blessed me with it, but primarily in my life, I've always been trying to focus on where God wants me. And I think that's why I've had such a successful career, even in hooping, is because um, I've always prayed to God, like, is this where you want me? I remember I had a, like a super big deal, like more money than I still have now uh, that was offered to me and I turned it down because uh, I didn't think that's where God was telling me that he wanted me to go to, you know, um, and I can tell you this, that like, I'm more driven off of uh, purpose than position. And so what that means is like, I'm looking for where God's telling me I need to go versus what looks the best. Uh, because it says in the Bible, like your own heart can deceive yourself, you know? So um, that's really been my main thing is really searching God. I mean, like, I search for him. Every, anybody that's close to me can tell you, like, I search for him a lot, right. like relationship wise, whatever it is, because I know there's going to be blessing. And there's things that that there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to fight regardless if you believe in God. But there's things that you're for sure, for sure going to have to be fighting if you're not with him. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to see that other side, you know, and not saying that I'm perfect and I and I and I make make the mark every time because I for sure don't. Um and so, yeah, that's 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 how like it really, I think, translates to that. And um, another thing um, that I'm trying to work on right now is, um, like, 
it says in the Bible, everything, do everything as though you're doing it for the Lord. So like, if you're doing something for God, that means you're doing it with excellence. That means you're doing it with like a great attitude, you know, and a lot of times with, I, I saw, I think Tracy McGrady say uh, on Instagram the other day about like fall in love with the grind, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I think, and that, that really resonated with me uh, because one, you're already going to be doing things. So you might as well do them with a good attitude and, and hard, you know, to their, to the utmost, like don't, don't half it because if you do, you're not giving yourself, you're wasting your time essentially. And you're wasting um, the people around you's time and the people that are like supporting you like boosters, whatever it is, coaches, whatever. Right. So it's just, it's just more of a, uh, a good mentality to have. I think that the Bible even touches about um, with just like doing it as though you're doing it for God, because you know, you're doing it with excellence, with a good attitude, like, you know, so I think that's a, I like how you mentioned the purpose over position. That was, that was a, that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. No. So with <clears throat> this, John, who are you outside of being a professional basketball player? So, like, what are the some of the things, like, passion-wise that you might do or something that people don't necessarily get to see? Um, If I – listen, if I never touched the ball, I'd probably be the biggest nerd. Seriously, I, I still am the biggest nerd. I'll be honest with you. Um, uh, I mean, like – and I'm not going to say nerd because nerds – people, you know – that one. And let me say this. One thing that's wrong with the world today, everyone's easily offended. It literally talks about that in the Bible. Now I'll be easily offended. I'm going to just add that in there right now, too. Because even though I said that, I thought like, oh, people are gonna see like, oh my goodness, he said he, he's a nerd if he does this or that. All right, well, you call me a nerd. Oh, your horse. Um, but in a in a jokingly way, I love anime. Um, I have since I was a kid. My dad, me and my dad used to go around watching it on road trips as he picked me up uh from my trip down from um uh from Michigan to Louisiana. Uh I've also just like learning. Um, that's something that I've been, uh, that I've realized in this past year that I really love. I mean, I knew it before, but now I've been actively trying to learn, you know, so languages, whatever it is. Uh, I'm actually learning Morse code right now. F for what reason? I have no clue. Hey, bro. Um, it's, 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 it's actually pretty interesting. Um, just I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know if if we get lost in the shipwreck, I'm gonna be who you want to be. <laughs> I'm gonna be the person you want. <laughs> like, it's like when like, we had that uh question, yeah. if you had, you know, what what was it? If you're standing on an island, what three things you gonna bring? Yeah, and what what three things you gonna bring? Y'all take mate and go be one of the answers <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> it is uh, now. Yeah, it is now. So I'm practicing it um reading. Uh, I've been getting into that more. I'm reading a book uh, by Mike Todd. I think it's called Crazy Faith. Yeah, it's called Crazy Faith. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, I skateboard. I grew up in Cali for really? a couple of years, five years. So I longboard um, still to this day. I don't skateboard anymore because you hit one rock and my boy, I weigh a lot and I'm a big person. So it's more than I, just a knee scrape now? I will be hurting something <laughs> indubitably, like no cap. Like I will be, I will be hurting something. Uh, I think those are really my main hobbies and just talking to like my family. Like I think those are the really my biggest things. Um, oh, and hiking. I love, I love outdoors. I don't get to do it as much as I want to. I know when I stop playing basketball, I'm going to do it more and I got to figure out a way to do it while uh, playing. But I love like the outdoors, even on my video game hit so those two don't really mix but right uh i gotta sometimes step away from the game make sure i get 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 into some nature so briefly mentioned the video game and solo queuing in life what is your favorite video game Jan? uh without a doubt apex legends <laughs> <laughs> and what that is my favorite play style and some of the favorite characters that you love to use in that video game what the I think my favorite character would probably be Bangalore. Mm -hmm. um, probably Pathfinder. Pathfinder is probably one. Obviously, just because of the clips that you can make and like, like it's insta push. 
or it's inst like you can play off angles with Pathfinder that you can't play with a lot of other characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like I like to play super aggressive. I used to be like very timid in the back, like strategic, like okay, the zone's about to close. We got a team to the left. We got a team to the right. If we get here, we're going to be able to pinch them from a high ground, and we could we could get to you know. So that used to be super me. That is still me, uh, to a high degree. Uh, but I'm like. I feel like I can win my ones every single time. Even now, I'm mouse and key because uh, I've been playing for over a year and some change now. Uh, but controllers is is no one's no one's beating me, and I could put I could put that against the best against anybody that sees this video. So you're not beating me in a one on one on controller in the firing range on Apex Legends. Okay. <laughs> What's your play style when you're hopping online and playing with these people? Uh, most of the time, like I said earlier, like I said it in a wrong term. I said solo queuing when I said life, which solo queue means you're basically playing by yourself. So I play by myself a lot. So basically I play my life. Like I, I, I'm more of an IGL. So I tell my team in game leader. That's what it stands for. But I usually tell my team like what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm usually like, super in it and like head first and kind of backing out if it doesn't work out mainly because i'm solo queuing and a lot of times the dudes i play with just uh aren't matching up so i play my life if, if it looks hectic <laughs> and you went down and your man's on 10 hp don't expect me to be there because i probably i probably, I probably am not <laughs> just like the uh stuck on the island just stick with yon yeah, yeah, just stick, stick, just listen to the comms. Most of the times it doesn't work out when the comms aren't listened to. You know, I got this friend named Mike who we was just playing earlier today. He uh, doesn't ever happen to listen to my comms, so, yeah. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to Mint. Um, to kind of flash back a little bit to college in the Georgia days, what was your college-like experience playing at Georgia in the SEC? Wait, re repeat it one more time. One more, one more time for me. Um, at Georgia, to kind of go back in time, what was your college yeah. experience like at Georgia playing in the SEC? I mean, it was great, bro. I prayed about going there, too. Uh, that's how I came down to that decision. A lot of people kind of got on my head. It was like, you know, I said, you don't want to go to Indiana? You don't want to go to State? Like, State, I don't think they really, like, I don't know if it was a clear offer. To this day, I still don't know. I, I don't know what I felt about that uh, when they tried to, like, come recruiting. But Indiana wanted me bad, and I was really thinking about going to Indiana. Ended up coming down to those two, Indiana and uh, Georgia. And I prayed about it heavy, and God said, Georgia. And so that's what I ended up doing. But my time down there was amazing. I mean, there's not a better – excuse me <clears> – <throat> not a better college, in my opinion. Like, all the way down to the coaching staff, to the boosters, to the, the, the cafeteria ladies. Like, I mean, everything there was great. Um, uh, the the people there that I met, the the students, like transportation, everything was good, bro. Like I literally had no complaints. It was, it was a match made in heaven for sure. That's that's pretty cool. Who's the yeah. toughest team you faced in college? <clears throat> toughest team. So I'm gonna say it like this: It was Kentucky. It just depends on which Kentucky. <laughs> so usually college when they had those had those super teams coming through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So first year it was who was it? I might need to look it up because I always forget how how the how it worked out, but I think it was um Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker, and I think they might have had some like some other people. I know they had Willie Colley Stein and then they had uh I think Trey Lyles. Carly Ooze on that team? I think he was. I, I think he was. I don't I'm not sure. You might have to look this up and fact check me. But um but I think he left. Yeah, I think he was on that team. He might not have been, but um uh I wanna say that team. No, 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 no. I was going. I was about to say Jamal, but it wasn't Jamal Murray either. It wasn't Jamal. It wasn't Jamal. But I think the toughest team was uh, what is his name? Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox. Oh, I think 
I think that was the toughest team. I ain't gonna lie. Them boys were so Damn, athletic. Right? Athletic. I mean, just like like when we played them, I'm not gonna say they're the best team, like overall. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Cat and D Book and them probably did the best. I think Tyler Ewis might have been on the team too. Um, but I think they might have did the best, like in terms for actually being the best team. But when we played, I felt like Malik Monk. I I I just Andy Aaron. So like both of them, because if it was just one player, I think that played the best that I've ever seen any Kentucky player play. I think it would probably be Jamal Murray when he was spraying them some threes. Boy, I walked out the gym with some, picking out uh, bows bows the threes out my head. It was crazy. But uh, I think I think probably uh, that that team with De'Aaron and they just they just hooped cold like they just looked. looked yeah, there's a difference. Out, fresh out that uh, AAU uh, circuit, like yeah, yeah. So I say them uh, with players like Lamelo forfeiting college to go play overseas or Scoot playing in the G League. Uh, which route do you think is better nowadays? Looking at it, it depends. If they already know you're going to the NBA, mm -hmm. you can go overseas, but you can get, I think you can get, I think you can get lost overseas in my personal opinion. Um, so I, I think I would say probably, I probably would say eh, it depends. Like I said, it depends. If if you right. are up there and they like, they already know that they want you, they like you, you know what I'm saying? And I'd say, yeah, yeah I'd say. But if if not, I would say probably G League keep so they can keep your eyes on you. That's just my personal opinion. Like you a product at that point, and they like any product. People really want to like come out and see you, get other GMs to see you, whatever it is, you know. So it's like you're right there, and more more available, kind of just like what the G, the G League's for, which is to keep you know players like readily available in case somebody goes down or whatever, you know, or like they like this person and they can fit your team, you know. Right. And with <clears throat> NIL being available now, but it wasn't when you were in school, would it have changed you uh, picking Georgia over other schools? Like if NIL was available, would you have looked at uh, schools differently? Yeah. So, you know, my answer probably would be no, because I prayed about it. Right. But if, if somebody was to come to me with a million dollars, out of high school and I didn't know no better, I think that's going to change just about anybody's mind. They'd be like, oh, yeah, well, that looks like, this looks pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but... Millions of lot. Uh, it is. I don't, I wouldn't change my mind for it personally, but I will say that um, in most people's eyes, like, whoever is going, I don't know, I just, I to, to me, that, that took, I mean, let me say it. Let me make it be clear. I would have loved to receive money playing in college, considering that, like, I felt like I did a lot for my university. And um, I saw, like, billboards and me and things, like, going um, on my way driving from, like, Atlanta to Athens or whatever. You know, we didn't, like, really touch a dime for it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think it was definitely deserved. But are they actually allowed to do, like, NIL, like, Give you the money before you get there. I think I don't be if yeah, yeah, it is right legally or hypothetically. No, no, I mean like 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 once you sign to this, you get this money. Is that how it is? Like once you sign to us, you're going to get this money. Honestly, I, I don't know, know how the contracts right. work, but with mm -hmm. today, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, yeah, I think it probably does work doing, like that. They get you doing some workouts and stuff, like almost. I wouldn't say as soon as you sign, but like when you're uh, yeah, season's over, right? Yeah. Type yeah, I, I think if it is, if it does go like with this school, you're going to get this amount of money. You know what I'm saying? I don't really I don't know if that's really how it should be. I think maybe like the first year it should be none or like very low, like a, a minimum rate everywhere. And then like based off your productivity or whatever the school then wants to offer you is how it should be. You right. know what I'm saying? So you get that. So you stay in that grind mode. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are earning money that they not about to get after college. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not really setting yourself up for like a success, like for the road of like building gradually. And like, you know, like you just touch a whole bunch of cheese all of a sudden at once. You know, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Right. 
So what would your advice be for, you know, athletes kind of going through the situation we're talking about choosing schools over money? Like, how would you kind of almost see through the money to almost see, like, what's a better decision to make? Yeah. First off, pray. Second of all, I would say, like, see how much, not how much, but like, how, yeah, see how much, like, the actual people are rocking with you at the school. Like, go talk to other players, talk to whoever the other recruits are. Like, these are things that you don't really want to do in college. I mean, in, in high school, because you're like, oh, I don't really know them. Like, that seemed weird type time. Like, what what's your vibes? Because, like, at the end of the day, like, you just trying to make sure you get in a good situation. Like, let that be clear to whoever is, like, the other person that's being recruited with you. Like, yo, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not stepping on nobody's toes. Like, this is what he told me. Like, what is he telling you? Like, is this where you trying to go? You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. That way it's, like, clear. You know what I'm saying? That's, like, more of a grown man thing to do. But the earlier you can do, like, you can figure out, like, what a college actually thinks about you in whatever way. I knew Georgia loved me because – uh, Coach Hayes, he was like, he was coming to my door. He was like knocking, saying like, yo, we really want you. Like even in snow, like they came and visited me and my mom in like a snowstorm, um, like on the on the visit. So like, I know they really wanted me and Coach would call, you know, and I could just feel it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. make sure you make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And it's not all money based because you want to be actually able to develop there. Like, are they going to rock with you the long way, you know? So, yeah. So after college, um, you were able to spend some time in the NBA uh, with the Miami Heat. Who is the best NBA vet you had in that time? James Johnson. And I just saw Nas Reed say the same thing. I think, was it Nas who said that? I think it was Nas. Yes. Some, yeah, I saw yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, James Johnson, 100%. He did the same, almost exact same thing he did with Nas Reed. He uh, he took he took me shopping. I was like, I remember it was at like his man's uh, clothing store. He said, "Grab, grab you some clothes. We can go over there, grab some clothes." I'm like, "Rook, I my pocket's not like that." So I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, oh, you know, he's like, "Man, grab some. I'm getting you know, I'm sure I grab some." The one thing in there, I walked up. He was like, "Man, grab some." Man. I'm like. All right, I'm gonna grab something. So I grab, I grab one more thing. He's like, "Man, you embarrassing." So I, he he ended up saying like, "I ended up going back." It's like 20 minutes later. He's like, "Man, you embarrassing me, man. This man's to grab some. So I'm like, "All right, man." So he's like, "You know, matter of fact, move." He put me to the side. Got to throw stuff over here. You just you this size eight. You just start throwing a whole bunch of stuff in there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, he looked out for me for sure. That's big, bro. To this day, um, he looked out for me um, and. Took me shopping. I ain't never been shopping like that before. You know, that was my welcome to the league type moment. Wow. Uh, that was your welcome to the league. Go get you off the court, off the court, off the court, off, off the court. court, off the court. Okay. Um, on that Miami Heat team, it was on the back end of D Wade's career. So, what was it like to be able to play with someone like D Wade? It was amazing. Just like he never, he was like very consistent. Like almost like steady Eddie, like always in a good mood. Always was like serious. The time you need to be serious. Just a real great, like you can tell he you can tell he been around been around been around the block for a minute, you know. Mm -hmm. Um just a real good dude. Um uh, like real prince uh royalty type vibes uh you got not just from him, but like the from the people how people treated him, you know, and he deserved that. Just off of like, not even just what he did in the league, but just who he was as a person. You know, I, I he was it was always good coming from me, considering I was nobody. You know, at that time for him to just like always say good things to me. Like he, I remember I was playing one day um, in the G League. I actually was not playing one day, but I hadn't played for the Heat in a while because they hadn't called me up and um, came up there. And he, because I think I was like averaging like thirty. Uh, in that month or something like that. And he's like, man, I seen what you can do in the G League. He's like, man, your new nickname, Buckets, or whatever. I was like, how I was and I was just thinking, I was like, how, why do you know what's going on in our G League? You know what right. I'm saying? But I guess he's like, attention to detail, you know, in the Miami Heat's like super big. So it doesn't surprise me that he keeps track. Like after knowing that now, um, but back then, like coming up straight from there, I was like, I'm very surprised. Like 
that they really knew what was going on. But they take that serious, you know. Yeah. No, it definitely shows now, especially with like all the young guys coming up, getting contracts, mm-hmm. signing yeah. teams. Yeah. Shine. Yeah. <clears throat> also, in that year, um, you got to go against LeBron James, which I mean, that 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 name needs no explanation. So, what what mm-hmm. was it like to go with? go and see LeBron in person? Um, So I didn't get to play against them, uh, but I was up when I, mean, I was on the bench, but uh, I was up instead of in the G League at the time. So um, I remember I got to be, coach told me, I'm kind of telling myself here, but coach told me during practice one time, he was like, he was like, uh, Yonce, you be uh, LeBron. And he kind of laughed at it. I was like, you laughing? Well, I'm finna come through this late and talk <laughs> that day. What is you talking about? <laughs> and so uh, he uh, told me, he's like, yeah, Yante, you go be Braun. And so uh, uh, I was being Braun. And I remember um, it was, I don't remember what our coverages was or whatever it was, but I just remember coming down. I was like, man, the lane is wide open. I'm like, like I could shoot this three, or I could really just get to the lane right now if I wanted to. Obviously, I'm not shooting this three because that'd just be a terrible shot. But if I get to the cup, I'm thinking in my head, coach gonna be like, "Oh no, we got to change, so we got to figure this out." Obviously, I'm a rook, so I ain't gonna tell coach like, "Yo, we, I think we need to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. It's not my place. <laughs> I mean, I'll be frank with you, that's not my place. <laughs> but I'm like, if I score this thing right here, you know, like you gonna be like, "Oh, we gotta fix that," you know, because we're not supposed to be able. To, let them score and uh like yeah, you know easy. yeah exactly and so i'm coming through and i dang near at the rim scoring it and coach is like no i'm past that out and i was like pass i don't think and i'm thinking in my head i'm like i don't think brown's gonna pass this right here um and i think coach had already prior said something to me maybe during practice or i don't really exactly remember the whole thing but i'm pretty sure coach yeah. was like it was along the lines where our coach was like, I'll tell you, you got to do this or something like that. And so I messed up. That might have been my, my second time messing up. So now I'm on thin ice. I'm like, man, I got to uh, do right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So, you going to get subbed out. Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't like, it wasn't the deepest thing. So I'm like, okay, so I come off or whatever, make my read, get to the lane. I'm like, man, this lane is wide open. But I said, no, I ain't doing it this time. I said, I'm just going to kick it. I said, yeah, Bron, Bron getting his assist today. So I I come off with the thing and I'm getting to the paint and I'm about to kick it. I'm supposed to kick it to the corner, right? But on the wing was um was was uh was Philly Cheese. D Waiters was on the, was on the wing on the wing and he like rook pass the ball and so I'm driving. I'm like I'm like I know I'm thinking in my head. I'm like I know you just heard Coach tell me to throw this to the corner. And I'm like, okay, maybe he finna make a, a a hockey assist to the corner. Maybe you know what I'm saying. They know some up there I don't do. I'm just a rook, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to live, live by what I hear yeah. at this point. So I'm like, I'm like, I had to split second. I'm like, I threw it to him. That boy pull up. I said, bro. I said, no, he did not just shoot this thing. No, it was supposed to go to the corner, bro. He shot that thing. And then coach was yelling, I was like, yeah, I just told you. I was like, oh, man, that's on me, Coach. That's for sure on me. I said, I thought he was going hockey. I, I, I said, why would he say that? He just hurt. That's what I was thinking in my head, but I'm like, I just took it. I just mm-hmm. took it on the chin. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's me. That's just being a rook, dumb mistakes, not being up there enough. Your mistakes. Um, yeah. And so I was telling, I was, t- I think I told, I told somebody, oh, I told some of my boys back home. I was like, bro. I said, I don't know about this coverage. I'm not feeling too strong about it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Man, do you know Bron came in that thing and lit us up? <laughs> and, Classic and, performance. To all, to all due respect, it's Bron coming back to Miami. You know he finished. Oh, his first right. game after leaving? I think this might have been – this is when he was on the Lakers. I think this was – yeah, oh, I think – I don't know if it was the first – I don't know if it was the very first time, but I think it was the first time. It might have been the first time. Uh, that's what two thousand. What's that? Two thousand eight, eighteen, two thousand nineteen season. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. That may that might be eighteen, nineteen, or nineteen, eighteen, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So he um came back there. He was knocking trade balls down. It just he just looked real comfortable. He was gonna look comfortable regardless. But yeah. I was just feeling like 
I would just feel like I, I had something I want to get up out of me and tell coach, but it wasn't my place to it. So I told him, I said, Brian, look, I said, I don't know about this coverage. Brian might go crazy tomorrow, and he ended up going crazy. So How much did he end up going for? 30 something, I think. I think it was like 30 something, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he was in that, he was in that one bag. Day. He was in that one bag. I don't know if any defense coverage is really stopping that young man, but um, <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Yeah, so point, that's my that's my only really interaction with Brian for real. So, yeah. well, <laughs> even though it wasn't an interaction, but yeah. <laughs> so spending some time, like what you're saying in the G League, kind of going from the G League to NBA, being around, uh, what do you think stops good players from potentially getting a shot in the NBA? Um, stops people from getting a chance in the NBA. Well, one, what I had, what I come to understand, like early, what really got me a chance on the Heat was just my willingness to cheer for somebody else. Uh, I remember uh, Tyler Johnson came into uh, when I was on the Heat. He came and talked around, um, talked to us, just like just telling us, like just giving us head, like game, like yo, like cheer for your man, it's like make sure you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the first person making sure, like, your man's just good, get him off the floor, like, all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? But that's heat culture. So he's really getting us hip to heat culture. And I took that for heart. I took that at face value. The man said, stand up, clap for your teammates. Every time my teammate did anything, stand up and clap. Because I wasn't – I don't think I got a lot of play time, like, my first game. But I was always standing up, clapping for my teammates. And I remember our next time on film, I guess one of our coaches noticed it. Or whatever. He was like, you see, Yante, he's over here clapping the whole time. He got up every single time, making sure his teammates was good or whatever. And I wasn't doing this to get a chance. I was doing this because that's what he told me to do. You know, this is like my first words hearing from an NBA guy. Yeah. Um, And so that's what, like, um, you can get paid, like, not to cheer people on, but to boost morale. You know what I'm saying? And not just boost morale, but to be, like, the in- thing about the NBA is that they already have their guys. You know what I'm saying? So now they're looking for dudes to fill in the like gaps. locker room guys. Yeah, locker room guys, glue guys, people that's going to do the things that nobody else wants to do, hustle, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, all those different things. And I kind of peeped that a little bit earlier on. And my game has never been that. I ain't never been no, like, super crazy hustle guy. I've always been the dude that they give me the ball, I'll go get a bucket, you know what I'm saying? But I did understand that a little bit early on. Like, you got to do some of the the intangibles, you know what I'm saying, that's going to allow your team to get that next victory, that one up on the next team, you know what I'm saying, that not everybody's doing it. So that's just something that I feel like can help. I'm not going to say that's going to hold you back. I think the things that will hold you back really is your inability to learn, you know. I always, on the court, I wasn't the fastest learner. Um, but, like, basketball IQ – Mine was always good, you know what I'm saying? Especially scoring, scoring wise, and even defense. It, my defense wasn't bad, but it wasn't great to the point where obviously some people are like, they that's their staple. You know, my staple is always right. offense, you know. Uh, but I think just to be the ability to be coachable and to learn quickly, you know, I think those are the things that can get you ahead, way ahead of somebody else um, that I've learned uh, when I was up there. Definitely. <clears throat> you can attest to uh, heat culture being a real thing. Yeah, no, that heat coach right there. They're not playing. They're not playing with nothing. They're not for no job. You, you get the, that body, you get that body fat test every three days. Something crazy like that. It's something crazy like that. Every three days. Um it might be like twice a week, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I felt like from I felt like I was getting checked every two. But it, I'ma just be nice and give it three. But um yeah, you was getting a check. You was uh getting checked quite often. Uh, but it's just a, just a lifestyle. It's just really you just like the heat culture is like one of those things like you have to give full into or uh, like they're just going to be on your head. You know what I'm saying about it? And so it's just way better to change your lifestyle and whatever it is to meet the criteria of what is expected from you, like any other job, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So on a given day for practice and a given game day, do you think practice was harder than the games? Uh, 
Well, it depends. My practice is okay for like a for any player particularly. Mm, I would think so, but I think it's just more about the discipline of the not just the well the conditioning. They 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 pride yourself in conditioning, so you're always gonna get conditioning. But once you get used to it, it's just like anything else. Like once you get used to it, that's just what becomes normal to you, you know. But looking back on, I was like, man, we were really doing like, like we we're living by a code, you know what I'm saying? Like this is Miami Heat basketball. Um, I would say it was hard, and I would say we practiced harder. I think we was, I think we say we practiced harder, but it wasn't to the point where it was like hurting us. <clears throat> um, I know that summer, at first, um, uh, after I played a season with them, and that summer, boy, let me tell you, that was the hardest working summer I've ever had in my life. Duncan said it too on a podcast. He was like, "Yo, like this it was the hardest uh, working summer I've ever had. Hardest time I ever trained was with Yante during the summer one time. Oh, like Pat, and then they told us like we we're me and Duncan were extremely offensively." Like great, like we're great offense, like mm -hmm. substantially great offensive uh, minded players, and we can score the ball extremely well. I always prided myself on that. And um, he got up there, he's like, Y'all gonna have to play some defense, basically. That's basically, <laughs> it's like, Y'all gonna have to say, and they said they set up a whole summer to us playing defense. We start, we start with like abs, we start with like, like core for like 20 minutes or something like that, and then we get to defense we we'd be doing slides up and down like two bands one around our thighs one around our our lower legs and be sliding the whole way like right. like the whole probably the first 40 minutes legitimately maybe a little bit longer probably 45 minutes two bands for sure 30 minutes was was uh was uh all was all defensive work Closing out, bands? close, close shuffle. We we had that band on for a minute, but it wasn't just the band. It was just like we were all shuffle slides. We'd close out slide, 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 uh, walk around like pigeon toe. Like it was crazy. I had never seen some of these defensive drills. They brought an actual specialist to help us become better defense defenders, which I didn't even know was a thing. Actually, yeah, yeah. Like walking on like the sides of our feet, it was crazy. I never seen nothing quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I had never seen nothing like it. Yeah, so that was definitely the hardest. And then we had the conditioning test on top of that. Um, yeah. And all that. So yeah. That, that that sounds like a fun summer. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> fun. Definitely fun. <laughs> um, so playing professionally at different levels and in different countries, what have you learned from all of these different situations, whether it be something about basketball, or something about life, or the way that you gotta handle business? Mm. Me and Mike Edwards was actually talking about uh, one of my good friends. We're actually talking about like the thing that allows you to succeed. And I think the number one thing that allows you to succeed is the ability to adapt. You gotta be able to adapt. So like you might be in one country here, you might be in a country there this season, or even half the season, whatever. And like you might be able to get let go. You might uh, find it comfortable here. You might have to talk to your family at this type of time or not be able to talk to them or whatever. Like, like you might be in a climate where it's warm or cold, like all these different things change and um, not be able to speak to people. Like you might be in a country where they don't speak English rarely at all, you know? And so uh, <clears throat> being able to adapt is huge in the basketball world and to shift your perspective into, okay, I see the good. You know what I'm saying? Versus I see the bad and all the things that I have to change about my vision. If you can't change your vision, like, and that's something that I think I struggled with for a little while too, was like, I'm like, man, like I am not in America hooping, like, and not just not America hooping. Um, I can't really talk to none of my friends or my family. You know, I'm a super big family person. So anytime I'm not around my family, it's like hard for me. And right. so, um, I think that was probably one of the toughest things was just not being close to my family. But once I like adjusted my mind, like I got to figure out times that I can talk to them, times that that work out for both of us and see the good in this. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like you kind of saying, uh, you ta you kind of talked about a little bit in the beginning, like when you said uh, you got to South Korea and you had to live in that um, facility. 
for quarantine, but like, yeah. as you gain more experience, what is it really like to play overseas? Like I, the goal is for everyone isn't always the NBA, like sometimes just to make a career, but I mean, you actually know what it's like to live in different countries and all that. So what's it really like? Clarify the question. What is it really like playing it, like in the, in like the, what is the, the life of playing overseas? Uh, like I kind of said before, it's a, unless you got your girl, you know what I'm saying? Or a wife or like whatever, it can get pretty lonely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's just, I think last year I heard a guy say like, I had to change my mindset because literally as soon as you get down to overseas, there's a countdown clock in your head. Uh, well, when you get to go back home, you know, and he said, I don't think that's how God wants me to live my life is on a clock countdown. Like he didn't put me here for a reason. You know, he, he didn't put me here for me to just be thinking about the States and my family. Cause he has a whole wife and kids, you know, which I'm sure is t 10 times harder for him. Um, and he's telling me, he, I don't think God put me here for me to be uh, just having my mind completely somewhere else but be working here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, like, obviously, um, he still gets to see his wife and then and kids and they come out and visit him or whatnot, but he says he he needs to make sure that um, he's mentally here too, you know what I'm saying? And not just mentally there. So, yeah, I think that's the main thing, is making sure, like, you're organizing yourself mentally and, um, and because I think Braun even said this too, like, um his his body can keep going uh but once his mind's out of it like it's over you know so i think that's what a hooper is whether in the states or whether over here it's just you have to a lot more variables uh while you're an overseas hooper uh than in the states what do you think that was the moment that you were introduced to like the business of basketball or business of sports mm. Mm. Uh, I mean, I kind of saw I kind of saw that once I got to the Heat a little bit uh, with like I won't say anything, but just who was playing. Sometimes I didn't really understand like why this person was playing. I'm not going to say specifically me. Obviously, I was a rookie, and I got to work my time in. I understood that, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes I would just understand, like, why I would just be thinking on the side, like, why this person isn't playing and why this person is. And then I heard about uh, people getting paid. Like, this person gets paid this much, so they're going to play him. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so that's just something that I – that's just something that I heard, um, like, just in the sidelines. And that's just what I heard – talk to my agents or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this, it comes down to a business. And sometimes it's not just about who you are as a hooper. It's like uh, who can get into somebody's ear and tell them like, yo, like, look at this dude, like, look what he's doing. He can rebound this for you, whatever, whatever, you know? So it's like, like life, it's all about connections too. It's all about performance and connections, you know, a uh, combination of those can definitely work in your favor or not, you know? So I think it's just like anything else. It's not anything crazy where it's like it's it, it yes, it's performance based, but that opportunity, uh sometimes the opportunity in itself, I think is a lot more business than it is uh sometimes just always skill based, you know, because right. I felt like I always outperform almost a lot of the players like my whole life growing up, like through college, through early years of professional. Like I feel like I always outperform um at those stages and I, I didn't really understand why I didn't wouldn't wasn't getting the same shot as maybe as maybe some of the others, you know, even though I performed better than literally right in front of them, you know. Um but that's something that I had to understand. Like that's not my journey, you know, and that's not where I needed to be. You know, God's gonna place me where I need to be. And if it's there, then so be it. If it's not, I'm still happy with what I got going on, you know. Yeah, that definitely how do you, so you mentioned God's definitely a big factor in you making basketball decisions, but how, is there anything else that goes into making those decisions, making those decisions with the business side? Mm. I would love to tell you no, 
I mean, tell you, <laughs> tell you like it's a whole bunch of other things that kind of go into my decisions. I know a lot of people think differently, and like I said, like that's just not me. I'm not one of those persons that be thinking like, oh, I gotta be. Like God says this is the way, and this is the way I don't really have to worry about it. And I think that's why it's a little bit easier sometimes for me to make decisions. And why also like when I'm not feeling like God's telling me anything, where it's like, okay, well, I'm just not in the place to make it right now, you know. If it calls for that, uh if I have time for that, if not, then I just have to make the decision and be led by what God says. I feel like he's saying. Um, yeah. All right. That's what it comes down to me. Definitely. Um I mean, for an athlete, there's always the life after sports is always, you know, the days we're not going to be playing. Have you ever thought about life after basketball? Yes. Um, what do I want to do? Um, I probably am going to do something in the church um, on top of whatever else I do as well. But for sure, something in the church. I want to. I, I like real estate. I like houses. I actually like interior design. I I don't know much about it, mm -hmm. um, but I do like just the concept of houses in general. So like, I want to own. I want to lease. Uh, whatever it is. Uh, probably maybe even Airbnb. But I'm like super big into the housing scene just in general. Even though I know it's not a great time for it. Um. Yeah, I think that's probably the two things that like I think of the most is just like spreading the gospel, houses. Um, and then oh, my other thing was wildlife. I went to school for um uh to be a wildlife biologist. Um so my major is wildlife biology. Um and I wanna start oh two things actually. I wanna start a um <clears throat> like a, a rehabilitation center for injured cats. That was like a thing I always wanted to do since I was like little. And I don't know how feasible that is, but I want it to be like an Africa type thing, like where like cats or whatever, like like the lions, whatever, whatever, whatever gets hurt there, you know what I'm saying? Cheetahs, whatever it is, like there's a place for them to get like better and like um, taken care of, you know, especially for the ones that are, that are um, low populated or whatnot. Um, or whatever that cats is specifically huh i said how come the cats specifically i don't know i was always super big into like my favorite animal is a cheetah oh okay um and i i remember when i was young i was i always heard about how i felt like i heard about how the cheetahs were declining i don't know how true that was that's what i felt like i heard when i was younger but i just felt like i want to help the animals that's always been my thing since i was little it's like help the animals type thing you know so uh that and then I would also love to start like a, a nonprofit for um uh dads and their sons to grow closer. Uh specifically in the African American community. Um, but it wouldn't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, so obviously anybody could come, you know, but I think I would target a lot of the black families uh with their dads because I feel like um <clears throat> There is, especially a lot of times, like in uh, urban um, uh, locations, and a lot of these locations, I feel like, at least where I'm from, a lot of dads are missing, you know what I'm saying, from their kids' uh, lives, and I know how that can affect, you know, I was blessed to still have God as my spiritual father, um, and so that helped me a lot with my mom telling me, like, what my father thinks of me you know what i'm saying and that type of thing so i think that'd be super good to help like rekindle that bond um and to have people outdoors like our world is like that's that's where the camp would be like the nonprofit. it would be like a camp so it'd be like uh in the forest so like s'mores like zip lining like canoeing fishing like all that type of thing that's what i grew up on lo loving you know the outdoors and so uh there's no phones. There's no really no no distractions. So that'd be like one of the things is to like put your phone away, um, like put it in like a little safe or whatever your valuables, and then just spend time with your your kid and talk about things. You know, because a lot of times like uh, there's a disconnect because of the time in our world being so social media driven, so 
technology based right. that some of those words don't aren't always there and because if the words aren't there then some of the feelings aren't there and can't get expressed the right way either you know and so i think that's something that's always been on my heart i've been saying it since i was like young like that's what i wanted to do it's cool uh, was to do something along those lines so I, I, those are like my i think i guess four i said four things four main areas yeah, yeah. you get the uh two you just said the cat one and then the dads and kids yeah and then uh real estate and uh, real estate and ministry gospel. Yeah, yeah, ministry. That's, that's a lot of goals you got but they definitely yeah. goals yeah. do you think anywhere in these goals or whatever um that basketball will still be involved in some capacity uh maybe i'm sure it will i'm sure i'll find my way back to it at some point on some like coaching maybe i don't even know some coaching like yeah. some tips training i always been super big on one-on-ones and training type things so like not so much training but just playing the game right yeah. so i'm sure it probably will i just don't think that'll be mainly my main focus like mm -hmm. i could i could i don't know if i could see myself in coaching coaching but i i could see myself in training because I actually like the reads. I like the reads of basketball more so than anything in the reacting of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the coaching, I'm not going to say coaching is babysitting, but to a certain degree, like, you got to make sure these men, you're you're not just, it's not just basketball. Yeah. Coaching is, coaching is, I remember Coach Fox, uh, he used to say, like, he's training us to be, like, men, you know what I'm saying? So it's not just, he wasn't just helping us be better basketball players, but he was making sure we were growing up to be, he was trying to make sure that we were growing up to be men uh, of valor, you know, so men of honor. So I remember he used to always say that. So Yeah. I, I've seen, definitely seen clips of uh, coach Saban talking about stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. so, to get in trouble. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a little bit more beyond basketball. I think I just want the basketball part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Uh, to kind of, you know, make it a little bit of a fun question. Um, if Yante had to guard Yante, so two different times of you, like say if it had to be college in the G League or whatever, if you had to pick two players, two Yans to go against each other, which one would win and why? Ooh, that's a tough question. You know, it's funny. I actually thought about that the other day. I was like, the Yantes that would beat me and the Yantes that wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Um I think the Yante in the G, I think the best Yante is probably the Yante in the G League and the Yante in South Korea. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are the two best ones. I think the Yante for me last year in the B League was really good until he got hurt. Um, but I think that I think those are the two best ones. Um, the, the Yante in the G League, he was, he was, my touch was impeccable. I mean, if it was getting to me, like it was like that in the in, and I, and that's coming from Georgia, you know what I'm saying? So it made sense. Like mm -hmm. if I got in the post, it was a wrap. But Yante in, in uh South Korea was getting the ball on the perimeter and sidestep tray balling you like consistently. So uh I would probably say South Korea because I got a little bit a little bit older. Um a little bit more I still, I still was, yeah, I still was hitting you in the post like a lot, like strong. But I just think that my my shot was like the field was impeccable. So like I felt like I could hit anything at that point. So yeah, I said that one. If you had to choose between superheroes or anime, which one would it be? Well, that's a very interesting question you just asked me. Because you know I love both of those. <laughs> <laughs> We've um, had many arguments about the superheroes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would have to like what? Okay, are we watching? Or are we just talking about in general? It, as a general topic, like if you had to topic, basically yeah. take one or leave one. Yeah, I'm gonna have. It's crazy. I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna have to go. Oh my gosh, that's literally. I don't want this to keep dragging on because I I will I this is one of those I have to go home and think. I am home, but I have to leave this interview and think about. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say anime just because I can watch anime even though i love superheroes to the point that i do i yeah, watch anime, anime probably has more 
more yeah. uh, stuff coming out. Okay. Yeah, I watch anime more than I do superhero things at this point in my life. Basketball or video games? Man, I'm taking the video game. <laughs> I'm taking my game. Listen, let me tell you this one thing. I'm going to stop hooping at, at some point. But this game, <laughs> this game, this game with me for life. Tell that to my wife. <laughs> Just like that? <laughs> They tell, tell tell my wife it's coming with it's coming with the kids. Nah. <laughs> but no, nah, I, I can't I don't think I could say that. I think I would say basketball, just from like what it's what it's done so far in my life and yeah, you know, the doors it's opened and how God's used that in my life. I would say basketball. If you could be part of a TV show or movie, which one would it be and what would be your role? Oh, I'm going I'm going right. Right back to where we said I'm. I'm superhero. I'm. I'm sorry. I had to reverse right back into it, but I'm. I'm a superhero, and I'm the strongest. I ain't gonna lie. My superpowers would be to take other people's superpowers. So everybody has superpowers. I'm taking superpowers. Give me that. I need that one. I need that one. So as soon as I touch you or as soon as I see you, yeah, I need all them powers. Yep, and they don't go away. There's actually somebody like that in Justice League. I remember the episode kind of little bit. You remember that? It was a dude. Uh-huh. Who took- it was a dude, you you too young. It was a dude who took uh <laughs> no no it was a dude who took, I forgot I forgot his name I forgot his name he took like everyone's superpowers but it was only to a certain degree or only lasted a certain time I forget you gonna have to fact check that but yeah it was it was somebody that did that so I want his power to take other people's superpowers that's fire okay and if you had a road trip for twelve hours nonstop no stopping you got two teammates and a celebrity who's in the car. Who's driving and who's on ox? Two teammates and a celebrity. And a celebrity for a 12 hour road trip nonstop. Teammates. Mike got to be in the car. You got to be in the car. Mike Edwards. Let me be Is he going to drive? Uh, what, is the, what is What is so we got? We got the drive, we got the ox and the what? You got someone who's going to drive the car and who's going to be on Ox for the music? Oh, two or two teammates. I'm tripping. Yeah, so I probably would say probably I probably say Mike and Kaiser Gates. Kaiser going to be on the Ox and Mike going to have to drive, but them is two like them is like two of my closest. Uh, and then who's the celebrity? The celebrity? Mm. The celebrity. I don't really, I don't really know no celebrities like that. I don't really know if I like any celebrities. That's the crazy part. Uh, shoot, can they do that? Can they? Can they still not be? Dang, I was gonna say cold, but I mean, you wanna do cold? I mean, I would say cold just because I would actually be interested to hear his story. So yeah, I'd say cold. Like if we could. Have Cole come down from heaven from a little bit of time. Okay. Ask that boy a couple questions. Okay. That'll be good. That's going to be a long road trip, Jan. I hope you chose wisely. Yeah, I know. I, I think I chose wisely. I think I chose wisely yeah. because the only problem with Kobe is he's not going to be turning up to the music how I'm going to want him to be. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to throw him, we're going to have to give him the, the earplugs with the headphones on top because I know Cole, like, um, Classical type music. I get, I get that feeling for sure. Yeah. R.I.P. My boy Cole. But R.I.P. Cole. Yeah. 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 But Jan, I appreciate you for your time and doing this interview. Yes, sir, my boy. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot. Do you have anything to take us out of here? Whether it be a saying, a hype, you know, you get a nice hype or whatever. Mm. Um, no, I don't know, know anything about no hype. <laughs> <laughs> nobody goes for the hype I'm, i've been trying to get somebody but what you got hey, i don't know if i got anything wise let me see i got my notes right here hold on let me see if i can pull up no I'm just, no I, 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 I ain't got nothing off the top of my head but listen I what i will that. say is what i will say is keep god first let him lead your actions mm-hmm. and your choices he's gonna be good bro you're gonna be good remember it's gonna be highs and lows let God guide you so when you get to a low, you don't got to worry about it because God brought you into the storm. Hey, He's going to bring you I out like of it. it bro. I like it. Yes, sir.
All right, bro. We out of here, bro. Thank you.